Hi, I'm Ira Block, National Geographic photographer and Sony artisan. I'm in Cuba working with B&H Photo on a series about environmental portraits and storytelling. A project like this does not come easy. There's a lot of logistics involved, a lot of preparation, and a lot of research, and you need the right gear. Today, we're gonna to look at how I'm putting this together and what gear I'm taking with me. I'm here in Cuba and putting this trip together may sound very daunting to most of you, but for me, it's part of what I do. This is part of being a travel photographer, a photojournalist. You need to know how to get around places. And one of the most important things is having someone, a local person, be your boots on the ground. You could call them a producer, you could call them a fixer. But these are the people that put your trip together. They work out all the details. You talk with them, you email them, you try to set things up beforehand as much as possible. I have a friend that's living down here for many years and he's my local fixer. I've worked with him on other projects in the past, and he's also a former photographer producer, so he really does understand the needs of a photographer, which are a lot different than the needs of a tour group coming down. There aren't answering machines, there aren't voicemail. So a lot of times he physically has to go to a place and make the arrangements for me. And when we are going to Vinales, it's a different story because he lives in Havana, so he's got a sub-fixer that lives in Vinales that starts taking care of things for him. The other critical person in the team is usually your driver. If you're not driving around yourself and you're using a driver, you need a good driver who knows his way around, who knows the importance of keeping your equipment safe in the vehicle. That's really pretty important because if your equipment gets ripped off, your project comes to a halt. Of course, in Cuba, we're working in a foreign language and Spanish is not my native tongue. When I'm taking pictures, I could tell people where to look, say nice things to them to be friendly and warm. Mira, mira a mí, sí. Ah, mucho trabajo, huh? Yeah. So my butchered Spanish does come in handy. And sometimes I feel that people watch me struggling with the language and feel sorry for me and are then more willing to cooperate. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. Now, whenever you're traveling to a foreign country, it's critical to check what the regulations are, what kind of visas you need to enter that country. Every country is a little different and some are easy, some are more difficult. Some people like to show up in a place, do very little research and go with the flow and just have serendipity guide them through their photos, which if you've got time to do it, is kind of an interesting way, but if you have a limited amount of time and a limited budget, then it's very important to do the research, to understand the country, to understand the culture, so you know what kind of photos you need to take. So once you've got all that in place and you know what kind of photos you need to take, then you have to start thinking about what kind of camera gear am I gonna bring? And that's where we're going next. Let's take a look at the gear that I've brought with me. Now, usually I pack light, but I never pack light. I usually think I'm gonna pack light, but I always bring more than I need because I don't want any surprises. So in this case, I've got two A1 bodies with me. At the moment, it's my favorite go-to body for most of my work. 
It's just terrific. Can't say enough good things about it. They're very quick to work with. Maybe it's because I know them so well. And I like the physical dials on top to make changes. I brought three zoom lenses, sort of my trinity of zooms with a slight change. I have the 24 to 70 G Master 2.8, which is a fairly new lens and it is really a great lens. I do probably 90% of my photos between the focal lengths of 24 and 70. I also brought my 70 to 200 G Master version 2 lens. It's a new version of the 70 to 200. It's much lighter than the former version. It's really fast to focus and it's a lens I always have with me. The difference in this trip is instead of a 16 to 35 2.8 G Master, I decided to bring the 12 to 24 millimeter 2.8 lens. It's obviously a much wider piece of gear. Anticipating being in small rooms where I'll need to get back a bit and won't be able to, so that'll give me a little bit more width. On the prime side, I brought a 55 millimeter 1.8, which is a lens that's been around a long time, but it's still a great lens for me. It's one of my favorites. It's very small. The 24 1.4 G Master is another lens I use quite a bit, especially at night when I'm walking around and I need that f-stop of 1.4. This lens is a little bit heavier. This is the 135 1.8, which I'd like to use for close portraits and at wide aperture so I can knock the background out. It has beautiful bokeh and it serves its purpose really well when I'm trying to do tight portraits instead of my looser environmental look. So what do I have? I have one, two, three, four, I have six lenses and two bodies with me. And I've also brought along the 1.4 tele extender. In case I need a little more reach with my 70 to 200, this works really nicely to give me, I think it's about 350, but you could put in the comments what you think it is. I don't have the time to do the math right now. You'll notice in some of the episodes, I'll be using my primes more in Vinales because those pictures are more set up. People I know, I've got a lot more time. So I'm able to work with the prime lenses there. However, in Havana, I'm moving around quite a bit and I don't want to be fumbling and changing lenses. So in Havana, you'll see me using a lot more zoom lenses. Well, on this trip, I've got a little surprise. I've got the new Sony ZV-E1 full frame camera. It's mostly meant for video and for vloggers. It has a multi-directional built-in microphone and it's small. I brought it along really so our crew could use it because we're planning on mounting a camera on a car and I think it'll be fantastic on a gimbal. And now I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, I may want one for myself. This is damn cute, that's for sure. And full frame, 12 megapixels, but very small, fully articulating screen. Uh, we'll give it a try and you know maybe I'll get one for myself. The other little surprise I brought was the Sony 50 millimeter 1.4 G Master lens. For years I've been using my 50 millimeter 1.8. It's nice and small, but this is almost a stop faster and it's about the same size as my 24 millimeter 1.4. And this is, from everything I've read, a terrific, really sharp, wonderful lens. I'm gonna use it myself, although I know the Video crew will be trying to grab it out of my hands, but we'll see what we could do. And of course, when I'm traveling, I've got plenty of little accessories. I'm gonna show you a few. This is pretty cool. This is an HNY digital filter, 
and it's a variable ND, a polarizer, and it will fit any mount from 67 to 82 millimeters. So you only need to carry one ND, one polarizer, one piece of equipment instead of, of a lot. The back is spring-loaded, and it really does stay on your lens. And we're planning on using this when we mount the ZVE-1 on the hood of the car to shoot through the windshield because I want to take off some of the glare from the windshield using the polarizing effect. I love tripods. I especially love little ones because many times I'm too lazy to carry the big one with me. So I always have this with me. This is a little Benro tabletop tripod. It's always in my bag and I could always put it on a table, on a rock or anything when I don't have my big tripod with me. If I really want to get low to the ground, I have a platypod with, a, with an old ball head on it that I could mount on flat surfaces, put something on it, keep it nice and flat, doesn't take up any room. And when I do bring my big tripod, this is a really nice size to travel with. It's an Enduro tripod, and it's got a nice ball head on it with a quick release plate. As far as bags go, this is what I go on the plane with. It's a Temba Rodi and it carries basically all my cameras and it will fit in the overhead of any plane. Well, most any plane, I'm sure we'll find one where it doesn't fit. But this is where I keep all the equipment traveling on the plane because I do not want to check anything. And then when I'm out shooting, this is my newest camera bag. It's a Tenba Tactical Version 2 16 liter pack. It's a little dirty from uh, my last trip to Jordan, I think. But this is a really good street bag. It holds enough equipment, and yet it's not so big that you're gonna load it up with too much stuff and not be able to carry it. When I'm going out to dinner and I don't really wanna carry a lot of equipment, I take this cute little Tenba DNA nine slim messenger bag. I could fit a lens or two in here, some extra batteries and my cards. And I'm ready to go, I'm ready to eat, and I'm ready to take a picture if something shows up. So these are just a few of my accessories. Well, I hope this video helped you feel a little less overwhelmed and more prepared for your next trip. Let me know where you're going and what kind of gear you're taking. Now it's time for me to head out to the streets of Havana and take some great photos. I'll see you there.